Hey everyone, today I decided to do another boss guide. This time for the Act 2 boss mission, the Fisher King. This mission generally doesn't seem to be quite as difficult for as many players, but I figured I might as well cover it. It's fairly lengthy, especially compared to the Night of Midnight. Going into this one, you can see the party I plan on bringing. I'm bringing Mordred, the Black Knight, Balin, and Ector. I think it's very important to always bring at least one ranged unit. I generally prefer to try and bring two. But with a um, Tyrant Christian run, I don't really have any other units that I think are ready or up to uh, par to bring into this mission. Later on, eventually, I'm going to start bringing Morgoth as an additional spellcaster, but when you first get her, her skill points aren't exactly how I'd like them. She needs a little more time to uh, sort of come online. Bringing Morgid, obviously, because you have to, and I would bring a defender anyways. I have Black Knight for AoE, and Balin for some single target burst damage in case I need it. For their gear, I still have Isolde's necklace. At this point, generally, I would like to start replacing it. I just haven't really found anything good enough that offers any good bonuses to Mordred. Um, for his potions, defensive as usual, health and armor, nothing special about any of his gear. If you're curious about any sp specific details on them, go ahead and you can pause them as I mouse over them. You can see the skills I have set up over here. Nothing too fancy, mostly just focusing on sort of support and defense with some uh, damage on Thunderbolt from Black Knight. The usual setup I like to bring for him, health potion, AP potion. Still have the teleport ring on him. I think that's just going to be very useful for a while until I get something that just really offers some great stats. For the armor, I do have a relic armor now for him that gives him one extra AP. I think that's pretty useful for champions. And then the same items here if you watched my White Knight mission guide. And then over here you can see my current skill layout for him. For Ector, nothing super special, sort of same potions, AP potion, health potion, his gear, nothing super amazing for him. This one here is actually probably the best new addition. So his attack can cause weaken after he's dealt 75 damage, that shouldn't be too hard, and his extra burn damage, so that's nice. Stacking with Essence of Conflagration, real cool. And you can see my skill distribution over here. For Balin, it's the same as the last mission. The only difference now is he has this piece here for extra poison damage, which he doesn't currently do any poison damage, but he does 33% less cost for his movement on his AP, which stacks with this armor, so he's going to be zooming. And then you can see I'm still holding onto this sword. I'm going to be using this for a while. And my skill breakdown as follows. I think that's enough of a preface. Let's just go ahead and get into the combat. So I'm inside the mission. Gonna go ahead and open up the map real quick. There's gonna be quite a few fights between here and the boss fight at the end. Something to keep in mind as you're going through, there's only two campfires, I believe, right before the boss fight. They're gonna be right here. So if you find yourself extremely messed up around like here it may be worth restarting trying again because you're only going to get so much help right here and there's like a mini boss fight I'm pretty sure right before you get to the get to use the campfires too so if you find yourself doing really really bad you made some early mistakes just restart don't try and push through it because you're going to be going a long time before you uh, get a chance to heal so we're at the first fight, you know, just this first main chamber, as expected. There's a lot of enemies, but most of them are melee. They're pretty spread out, so it's going to take a lot of them to come running in. So we're going to just kind of camp down on this one. No need to really spread out. I don't even think this crossbowman can run up and shoot us in the same turn. There's only three of them. So we're going to go ahead and use our superior range on Ector to... Um, try and mess with him a little bit. Everyone else I think can just camp down. We'll set some traps up. Something something like this. Yeah, 
Okay, crossbowmen moved back. That's fine. I mean, they can't shoot me from there, so... <laughs> Um, he can't, he's probably gonna run straight and then through that trap so we're actually gonna we're gonna do something like that and I actually don't want to slow him I want him to run through the trap so we'll go ahead and we'll just shoot you move back we're gonna save this for when the crossbowmen get closer, and we're just gonna we're just gonna keep waiting. Nice, just as predicted. Would have been better to open up with a power attack there because it gets that twenty-five percent bonus. I'm now missing out on. That's all right. It's not huge. Very nice. Let's pull you back like this. Let's turn you around. It's cover bonus. That's right. Um, I mean, we could leap attack. Honestly, I think we're just going to set up an overwatch here. And we're good like that. Okay, that works. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna eat those opportunity attacks. Only lost an armor at each. That's fine, because now we're gonna leap attack. We're gonna, gonna fire blast. There we go. And. He's... we're gonna send Balan after this guy. And since he can't stall, if we'll put him around here, he should be safe from getting shot. We'll Blood Hex this guy, so he should die if he tries to make an attack, because I believe he will bleed at the start of his turn. Yeah, and then after every action, so if he chooses to shoot, the bleed, the single proc will get him within lethal range, the second proc upon shooting someone should kill him. Or the initial range will just kill him. That works too. And you can see moving all this distance is only 3 AP. No point. We'll just. Let's have Mordred stay here. Keep body blocking. If anything, move you back a little bit. Yeah. Bah. That went pretty well. Took a tiny bit of health damage on Mordred and a little bit on Black Knight. Nothing big though. Now I'm showing you this, because a lot of players actually do seem to ask about this. It seems to be the main thing I see people ask about when it comes to this mission. This room here, you can't go into it, and players ask, you know, is there some way to go into it? Is there like a lever or something we need to find? No, you can't go into this room as part of this mission. It's just blocked off. This room exists basically to be used on this same map for different missions. So don't worry about it. Don't, you know, try and waste your time trying to figure out the secret entrance to it. You, you just can't go in there. Second fight, second main chamber. They uh, spread out pretty wide here. Still not a whole lot of ranged units, and they're not even within range of us. So I'm actually going to pull back a little bit and try and funnel them a little more. Like so. 
set a couple traps. Something like this. Still plenty. Look at how much movement we can get with just 3 AP. We're going to go ahead and stick with the party, though, a little bit. Move you this way. Pull you back. Ah, I went just around it. That's all right. But you can see, these guys are now out in the open instead of being able to use these pillars as cover. And these guys are just grouping up more, which is better for us. Because now, we can do stuff kind of like this. We're actually going to use jump here to uh, conserve AP, since we're going to move around like this. Uh, I should have moved here instead. Going to eat an opportunity attack here. Yeah. That's alright. Now, same as before, we're just going to go ahead and move into a cover position. Like so, since we don't have enough to remain in stealth. And if I'd played that right, I would have had enough. So, pick your positions carefully. Ready. Hector, push you deeper into the fire. Black Knight's taking a lot of hits here. That's okay, a little bit of vitality damage, no injuries. No big problem. Uh, they're all gonna die too from the burn, so... We just teleport here. And that's done, very nice. We're actually gonna use the heal on Black Knight. And then Balan here. Go ahead and pop this armor potion. Blood Hex. There we go. Just pull that back. We're going to pull everyone back. Mordred's pretty safe with a good amount of armor back on him. He shouldn't really take any damage from these guys, and we don't want them running off chasing after our other side targets, so on our next turn we can easily just move in, sort of enclose on them, and finish them off no problem. Just like expected. Very nice. So the first room I recommend you going to is this left one. There's a nice little chest here in the corner. You find this sort of priest. As you talk through the dialogue, you'll see he offers four options here to try and get him to open the door for you. Pretty much all of these, I'm pretty sure, will get him to open the door other than the tyrant option, which you kill him and then the door opens anyway. So this is basically just an alignment point. If one of your alignments seems to be kind of falling behind the other one, like you have 12 Tyrant, but only like 10 Old Faith, you'd probably want to pick the Old Faith one here, and vice versa for any other combination. I'm going Tyrant Christian, so I'm going to go ahead and pick my uh, Christian option here. Here he is, opening the door so we can progress. Either way, you do need to talk to this guy to get to the final boss. In this side room here, there's just a bit of loot, there's a body here, and a loot sack. This chest will actually reveal itself if you have a character with two spellcraft or higher. So, maybe keep that in mind. It gives you about 200 relic dust, I think it was just a little shy. Um, but that's all there really is in this room, so you can keep going, no extra fight, and get your way over to those campfires. So this is the final fight right before the boss. You can see there's even two shrines and two campfires. They're really trying to load you up before you go in. And this is that mini boss I was telling you about. You can see this guy over here, definitely the more defensive of the two. This one, I believe, is like kind of the more offensive. This is by far the easier to kill target, so we're going to focus him first. 
you know, like, slow him down. And then we're just gonna lay some traps. I mean, this dude's probably just gonna run in a straight line, so... We're just gonna let him. We're not gonna overwatch. Sometimes overwatch will discourage them from moving into it if they're gonna be by themselves because this guy's gonna be separating himself from his partner pretty heavily so there's a decent chance he may not actually step onto this last trap if he sees we're in overwatch so we're actually not going to overwatch here but i also don't want my black knight taking unnecessary hits so we're actually going to pull him back like so and then we're going to move mordred up front perfect <laughs> through all four of them. Just keep delaying him. And then we'll just keep waiting. Go ahead and put a blood hex on him, might as well. Okay. No more overwatch for you. Nice. So before we go into the boss, obviously we're going to take advantage of all of these. First one's going to be armor, since we're missing armor on Mordred and the Black Knight. And that's this is why I used the heal for Mordred on Black Knight earlier. Now he's mostly full. Mordred didn't take much over the course of the entire fight. I'm thinking about probably doing armor again. I think that'll be a better damage negation for the Black Knight. So we look at these blessings. We have Bless. We're probably going to put that on Balin. He's definitely our main damage dealer right now. And Protection... Not going to do a whole lot on either of these two. We're going to put it on Black Knight. So then we go into face off against the Fisher King. So the Fisher King boss fight does start off pretty simple. It is just him. But Unlike the Knight of Midnight, his phase two, I believe, will happen after we have deleted his entire first health bar and vitality bar, because he kind of comes back to life, because, you know, that's his whole thing, is the Fisher King, the power of the Grail, you know, if you've been paying attention to the story. So, we don't need to worry about a whole bunch of ads until phase two, and just try and focus on conserving as much of our health as possible through this first phase. Set some traps as usual. We're going to pull off to the side over here. Put a slow on you. Pull you back. And pull you back, actually. Just going to let him walk forward, get close, save AP. Don't need to send my Black Knight running after him. And he'll take a little extra damage from these bear traps. Ah... Uh, he went around him. And that's also why I kind of went off to the side here with Balin. If I kept him here, he would have been revealed and probably attacked. The Lord is my witness. But now... We can do this. Make up your mind. And we're just gonna... We're just gonna wait here. Yeah, it's not worth using. We'll just conserve the AP for next turn. Everyone's outside of the Shadow Lightning. Yes, good. Alright. Alright, so now we're just going to... Oh, it's only 2 AP. We'll go ahead and move to here. Start getting our backstabs. And excellent. Get a leap attack in. 
Power attack. Can't do anything with him. So Black Knight's gonna probably eat a hit on this, but he's full armor, 44 HP. I'm not worried about it. Oh, he actually did nothing. Interesting. Some moves? Maybe we're on cooldown? I wasn't paying attention to that. But, you know, not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Let's just, um... Not going to use Balin to set him into phase 2. We're going to use everyone else to conserve AP. I can't remember if the AP crosses over or if it treats it as the start of like a new, like a second fight. But we'll see here in a second. And then you'll notice he did not die there. The objective here, use the Excalibur Mordred to kill the Fisher King. So there we go. Phase 2 started, and you can see here, this is where he summoned in the adds. One of them actually spawned on one of the bear traps, so he took some damage and is slowed already. So that's actually pretty useful. And yeah, so the round continues. It doesn't even break up the round. Immediately, just continuing. This is why I wanted to conserve AP on Balin. We'll do that since we're here, but I'm actually going to switch him over to add duty. because I don't want them messing up the rest of my party. And we'll just move like this. You're slowed, so I'm actually not too worried about you. Let's slow you. Let's actually pop our haste potion here. So we have a nice lineup here with Earthshaker. We're definitely going to take advantage of that. Put Blood Hex on you. This is mostly to reduce the damage he's outputting. Shoot a bolt this way. Continue to pull you back. Stigma. Thunderbolt to get the kill on you. We're going to move Balin all the way up. We're actually going to save this potion until his next turn, where he has more of his AP available, just to get the most out of it. Because this way, we're currently only getting one attack. And we're not even going to move Mordred. We're just going to drink this health potion. He should be fine. was a lot more attacks than I remembered. I thought he was going to do three. <laughs> um, so he did take some vitality damage there. That's all right. Only 11. Burned through everything else. So we definitely want to kill this guy, you know, soon. So we're going to drink the potion. Re-stealth. Because if I drink the potion after I reveal myself, that will count as an action and use up my surprise bonus. So potion first, re-stealth move, attack, repeat. After the boss is defeated, make sure you look around his throne room because there is a lot of treasure in here. You can see there's two chests here on this side of the room. There should be a relic chest in here as well. Two more regular chests. Nope, here it is. Roller chest. Very nice. And that is the Fisher King. So that is the end of the Fisher King mission. Definitely much easier than the Night of Midnight, in my opinion. And I think a lot of players probably feel the same way. That's why not too many players I see, you know, looking for help with this one, but it's one of the boss fights, so I figured I'd cover it for anyone that may want just a little bit of a heads up before they go in. Something to help, like, iron out their performance. Maybe they're taking more hits or injuries than they would like or be comfortable with. I mean, I took a little bit of vitality damage with Mordred. 
because I was not expecting the Fisher King to be able to do four attacks. It's been a little bit since I've done that fight. I don't recall him doing four attacks before, but something to look out for. And took a little bit of vitality damage from Black Knight because I was being a little aggressive with him. Maybe should have given him a little backup to split some of those attacks. But, I mean, on very hard, beating one of the bosses with zero injuries, I mean, this is like one mission time of resting in the hospice without even having to pay, I'm pretty sure. And, yeah, I mean, mission was actually a bit shorter than I thought or remembered. I think I may have just been confusing because I remember there being some big boss fights, and I know there's a number of other missions that happen on that map, so maybe just kind of confusing them. But uh, either way, hope this was helpful to some of you out there, at least a little bit, or if not that, at least entertaining, seeing how I go through the mission. But um, yeah. Thanks for watching.